This is a graphics card. To be more specific, it's a white graphics card. Now, that in and of itself makes it pretty unusual, but the fact that it's a 2080 Ti and bears the Galax Hall of Fame crown makes it a downright rarity and almost non-existent in the United States. Is it worth the ridiculous amount of hoops that you have to jump through if you want one? Well, let's try to answer that today. Now, just to get this out of the way, I'm aware that in some parts of the world, the Hall of Fame sub-brand of Galax is more readily available than it is here. And I even spoke with a friend of mine who told me that in Australia, while these cards aren't exactly flooding the market, they're actually less expensive than the Asus Strix model. But for many countries, the United States included, Hall of Fame cards have been unicorns for several generations now. With the introduction of the RTX line, to my knowledge, Galax hasn't even offered any of them for sale here at all. So how did I get one? Did I just reach out to my contact at Galax and ask? Well, yes, I did do that, but I was basically laughed at. I was determined, however, so I decided to look overseas. Specifically, I sent emails, foolishly in, in English, to stores in Egypt, India, the Philippines, South Africa, Turkey, and Vietnam. The few responses I got basically said, sorry, no can do. I then shot a few emails to the other side of the world entirely and hit up some online outlets in Australia. I found one store that actually had one of these in stock, but they didn't ship international. I wrote back and explained my situation and tried to work a deal involving some promotion of their store on the channel if they could at least work with me and help me to get one of these cards. Eventually we reached an agreement, but they said that the only way they could get a Hall of Fame card over to the US was by international freight, which meant a giant wooden box and anywhere from $300 to $600 in shipping costs that they would definitely not be covering. It was at that point that I decided to see if any of my Aussie buddies could help me out. I reached out to Brian of Tech Yes City and Stu of GGF Events. Brian was leaving shortly for CES and wouldn't really have the time to get involved, but Stu, well, Stu is the man. We ended up running the transaction through him and having the card shipped via courier to his house. It arrived a day before he was leaving for CES and he packed this giant box in his suitcase and brought it with him to Vegas where I was waiting with open arms. Yikes. So I finally have the card. What's so special about it? After all, the rated boost clocks are exactly the same as the Founders Edition. It's got the same amount of CUDA cores, the same 11 gigs of GDDR6, and the same memory speed as any other 2080 Ti out there. Well, Galaxy's custom PCB sports 16 power phases and three PCIe 8-pin connectors, meaning that this card can draw, potentially, up to 525 watts of total power if you're going for some kind of world record and shunt or BIOS mod the card. After watching Buildzoid's excellent PCB analysis, which I'll link down below on his channel, Actually Hardcore Overclocking, the power phase configuration is actually more along the lines of a 12 plus four as opposed to a true 16 phase, still enormously impressive and more than enough for almost any application. Keep in mind though, that the card was designed for extreme overclocking and has all the features that you'd want if that was your objective. There are voltage monitoring points along the top edge next to the NV link fingers and jumpers on the board to help you bypass power limits. But we're not gonna mess with any of that, at least today. Instead, let's just take a look at how different a white shroud with gold highlights is compared to anything else on the market right now. The Galax cooler design is enormous, to put it bluntly. It's 330 millimeters in length, with the power connectors at the end, meaning that you'll need a few more centimeters of clearance if you hope to cram this beast in your case. It's gonna take up a full three slots and even maybe a little more than that if you install the optional RGB enabled Hall of Fame crown. This part of the card can be used to display the Hall of Fame logo, GPU specs, stats like clock speed and temperature, and up to three lines of custom text. Yes, the whole setup is a bit gaudy, but that's kind of what you might expect from a GPU that's supposed to be the best of the best. 
If you'd rather have a more subdued appearance, the standard white panel cover is probably more your speed. On the IO plate of the card, there's a button for what Galax calls Hyperboost. In reality, all this really does is crank the fans and run the GPU ever so slightly faster. It's by no means an actual overclocking profile, and in all honesty, it's kind of just a gimmick. Anyone buying this card should not press that button because it does very little, and anyone with any kind of overclocking acumen can do way, way better, as we'll see in a minute. So because a 2080 Ti is a 2080 Ti is a 2080 Ti and performance between different models isn't likely to see any kind of huge swing, I'm not gonna compare the Hall of Fame card against any one card in particular. Instead, I'm going to compare it against itself. I ran thermal, acoustic, and power tests. I monitored clock speeds and I grabbed some benchmarking numbers in the stock configuration with the hyperboost button enabled and then with a manual overclock applied. Here is what I found. So I could definitively say this, the Galax 2080 Ti Hall of Fame is the fastest 2080 Ti I've ever had on my bench. It overclocks better and lays down flat out higher average frame rates in games than even the EVGA for the win three card, which I loved. For the sake of a quick comparison, the overclocked EVGA flagship scored 90.8 frames per second in heaven versus 93.6 for this guy and 6804 in time spy extreme versus 7330 here. But there's two sides to that coin. The Hall of Fame card was an absolute monster when it came to overclocking using Galaxy's Hall of Fame AI suite, but it also blew out my eardrums with fan noise while doing so and still got really warm in the process. Again, for comparison's sake, at full manual overclock, the For the Win card ran at 58C and only put out about 48 decibels. If you want fast, this is your man right here, but you're gonna pay for it acoustically and thermally, not to mention out of your wallet. As expected, the Hyperboost button is just a stupid gimmick and doesn't give us any real performance uplift. What does give us some actual uplift, literally, is the included RGB-enabled PCIe support bracket, which is pretty cool considering how large and heavy this card is. If you're worried about getting grimy fingerprints all over it during installation, well, don't because Galax gives you these microfiber Hall of Fame branded gloves, so you can keep your card nice and pristine during install. You also get three all white twin Molex to single eight pin power adapters. And all I have to say about that is, if you're in a situation where this is the GPU that you're buying and you need to utilize these Molex power adapters to make it work, well, you've made some bad life choices along the way. And maybe that's what this card is, kind of like a bad life choice. Don't get me wrong, it's absurdly good at being fast, but the difference versus the next best thing, while noticeable, is small, and the price premium is enormous, and availability is basically zero. I have a special use case for this card that made it worth it for me to chase one down, but for basically anyone else looking for a high-end 2080 Ti, there are definitely better choices out there. 
Unless you want a white GPU, I guess, in which case, might as well start making some calls to Malaysia because you ain't finding one on the shelves at your local Best Buy. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Hit that thumbs up button and get subscribed if you enjoyed this video. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.